Hello, my name is Avi Noam Pat. I'm the director of the Center for Judaic Studies and Contemporary Jewish Life at the University of Connecticut. And we are proud to be a community partner and co-sponsor of this film, along with Yukon Global Affairs and the Abrahamic Initiative of this film, Dead Sea Guardians. And I'm very pleased to moderate this post-film discussion with two distinguished panelists who I will be able to introduce in just a moment. First, I am pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Mira Suharov, who is a professor of political science at Carleton University in Ottawa. She holds a PhD in government from Georgetown University, an MA in political science from the University of Toronto, and a BA in Middle East Studies from McGill University. She is the author of Borders and Belonging, a memoir published in 2021, Public Influence, a Guide to Op-Ed Writing and Social Media Engagement, published in 2019, and The International Self, Psychoanalysis and the Search for Israeli-Palestinian Peace, published in 2005. She is co-editor with Aaron Han Tapper of Social Justice in Israel-Palestine, Foundational Contemporary Debates, published in 2019, and with Eric von Rithoven, Methodology and Emotion in International Relations, Parsing the Passions. She is currently writing a dual travel memoir with Omar Dajani on space, place, and emotion in Israel-Palestine, and is developing a podcast on the past and future of Jaffa called The Vacant Lot. She has published many op-ed pieces in Haaretz, The Forward, The Globe and Mail, The Toronto Star, JTA, Jewish Currents, The Ottawa Citizen, The Daily Beast, and Huffington Post, and is a frequent media commentator. Welcome, Dr. Mira Sukharov. Thanks, good to be here. And I'm also pleased to welcome Nadav Tal, uh, who uh, is trained as a hydrologist and has been with EcoPeace Middle East uh, auto Water Officer since 2015. Previously, Nadav worked in the private sector as a consultant to the Ministry of Environment in Israel in the field of soil pollution and groundwater remediation. In 2011, Nadav graduated from Princeton University in the groundwater remediation course. Nadav has been an environmentalist since childhood, dedicating his career to work in conservation and combining this with outdoor activities in Jordan, Israel, and Palestine. As part of his work at EcoPeace, Nadav represents the organization on various forums, for example, the National Water Forum and Green Forum, and regularly gives presentations about EcoPeace's work at conferences and to university and school groups. EcoPeace Middle East, formerly Friends of the Earth Middle East, is a regional environmental peace-building organization in the Middle East, bringing together Jordanians, Palestinians, and Israelis to create shared solutions for the most water-scarce region on the planet. Welcome, Nadav Tal. Thank you. Thank you to be here. So we've just seen this uh, film, Dead Sea Guardians, and I would love to uh, first hear both of your initial reactions uh, to the film. Um, I'm sure that many in our audience uh, are shocked to see the condition that the Dead Sea finds itself in uh, today. So uh, Mira, if we could start with you, just tell us sort of your, your initial reactions to seeing this film. Well, one thing is the the aerial cinematography is stunning. And so I want to give hats off to the cinematographer and directors for those shots. And what it really helps us see is both the, the tragedy of the shrinkage of the Dead Sea and also the stunning beauty of it and beauty of nature. And, and so not only the aerial shots, but the the um, the shots of the swimmers right from the side where because it's because of the high salt content, there's and, and other things that Nadav can better explain than I can. There's very few waves. We don't have waves and wind and white caps. So we have them swimming through something that seems very idyllic at the same time as being quite dangerous and risky to them, owing to the high salt content, which is higher than it should be because of the recession. So I'm just going to start there just at the nature point, but there's lots to talk about with the politics. Absolutely. And and Nadav, I'm so curious from your perspective, both being someone who works for, for EcoPeace, but also with your area of expertise, what stands out to you about, about the film? First of all, what I liked about the, uh, this film the most is because I know the people who are like participating in the film, like they are my friends. And it's actually seeing my colleagues and the people I'm working on these issues uh doing what we care about the most is saving the dead sea and i think um, the, the this film is a great tool 
of raising awareness that uh, many, many people are not aware of, not only in the world, but also in the Middle East, between Israel, Jordan, and Palestine, not everybody knows about the situation. So I think the, this film is another tool to promote awareness and causing some change for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Nadav, we, we are fortunate to, to have you here as someone who, who works with EcoPeace, which we see featured extensively in the film. But I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more um, about the work of EcoPeace, sort of the aspects that maybe we don't see in the film or perhaps um, the work that has continued in the aftermath of what we see in the film in terms of yeah. what EcoPeace has done. Mm -hmm. So what's special about Ecopis, about organizations, that we are the only organization in the region that is a joint Israeli, Palestinian, and Jordanian uh, organization. Uh, we have common project, and you know, in an area that is in a conflict, like our area, it's very complicated, and it's not a coincidence that there is no other organization. And I think that uh, using the environment, and especially you know, a, a subject like the Dead Sea, uh, can get everybody's attention. And uh, it doesn't matter what is your political opinion or where are you from, uh, you can uh, connect to it. So uh, we take the Dead Sea as an example of how can we bring people together. And this is what we do in many other uh, projects that we have if it's the Dead Sea or the Jordan River that we want to rehabilitate, if it's uh, bringing Israelis and Palestinians together to agree on water issues, uh, it's we're always looking for the win-win, you know, for what's good for the Israelis, what's good for the Palestinians and Jordanians in the environmental, our shared environmental resources, and start working together. And when we start working together on issues like in the environment, we can build trust between each other. And then if we build trust, we can move on to other issues as well. You know, but let's start with, you know, uh, taking our shared environmental uh, resources or uh, the, the, our heritage, the world heritage sites that we have around us and working to uh, maintain it for the next generation for all the people of the region. Yeah, I, I'm struck by by what you say, Nadav, about this idea of trying to find sort of win-win scenarios, right? This idea of trying to bring uh, groups that are frequently in conflict with one another and finding opportunities that will not be seen as kind of zero-sum um, uh, scenarios, but bringing them together to find opportunities to work together, um, which can then build trust and hopefully uh, lay the groundwork for future collaboration. Um, Mira, I, I'm I'm curious. So you know, we can see that in the film that it it demonstrates the opportunities of environmental cooperation and in peace building initiatives, but it also shows us the challenges of of collaboration in this current geopolitical and and economic climate. And so I'm just curious as a as a scholar who's worked on space, place, and emotion in in Israel Palestine. Um, what you see as the as the opportunities? Do you see a uh, reason for optimism? Um, you know, in terms of the projects that are proposed in the film, um, how can an environmental catastrophe like what we see in the film uh, ironically bring opposing groups together? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. I think you you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned the, both the opportunities and the challenges. So, environmental cooperation, as we all know, is difficult at the best of times because there's an incentive by everyone to let others do it what professors fancy professors call the free rider problem or the tragedy the commons let's just let someone else take shoulder the burden but we'll still get to breathe clean air if we don't or or swim in in less highly concentrated salty sea but the problem is compounded even more as you're alluding to when you have um either a cold peace as we do between Israel and Jordan or really no peace between Israel and the Palestinians where you have, it's not only that there's no peace, it's not only that there's sort of an enmity relationship between Israel and Palestine, Israel is occupying 
uh, the West Bank where Yusuf lives. So, um, so definitely extra challenges. Um, Nadab does point to the, the idea that grassroots initiatives like this, whether at the NGO level, which is sort of mid-level or at the individual level of just swimmers coming together can help to build trust higher up. It can percolate goodwill upwards. But, but then Avi, you mentioned emotion and with emotion comes memory and with memory comes other rights that also need to be addressed. So there's a really powerful line. When Oded says the Nakba, was decades ago, why let's do something. But of course, I'm just gonna be a little bit critical now. What he's promising to do doesn't have anything to do with the Nakba directly. It doesn't have anything to do with restitution, compensation, refugee return, helping. We don't know where Yusuf's parents came from. Were, were they always in the West Bank? Might they have been, let's say in Jaffa where many, where 68,000 Palestinians were emptied out in the course of two weeks. So the film, and I give the director's credit for hinting at this, that there's many other issues underlying not only the challenges of cooperating on ecological catastrophes, but the need to also address the human catastrophe that has the human suffering that continues to exist in this region. Yeah, I think that is um, incredibly striking, and and that line, right? The idea that um, you know, Oded Oded expresses of let's move on in order to sort of confront the challenges of the future, while incredibly compelling, does does raise sort of the complexity of of as you say, both the the place and the emotion that's associated with it. Um, Nadava, I'm so curious to to think about sort of how eco peace. I mean you as an organization, this organization has has decided to confront these challenges head on to say that the environmental uh, situation is so uh, critical and so uh, catastrophic in terms of the, the, the looming crisis or the crisis that's unfolding that we have to overcome these differences that exist. So can you tell us a little bit more about how how you as an organization, you personally and then the organization try to bring together um, uh, Israelis, Palestinians, Jordanians yeah. to to do this on, on a very practical level? How do you overcome these differences? Okay, so uh, we definitely had to understand uh, where can we influence, okay, and where can we make a change? Now, uh, uh, for us and for me as well, I think that everything starts in education, okay? So uh, while uh, you have so much ignorance between the people of the region and the government doesn't make it better, so we need to uh, start looking in other directions. And the other direction is from youth. You know, we from grassroots, bottom up, uh, we start to bring people together in the young age and bring together and speak about the environment. Okay, so first we uh, go uh, to youth, to schools, even uh, universities, and bring, uh, you know, the people together. And there's so much ignorance. And with my experience in Ecopis, sometimes it's so difficult just to have the will, you know, to meet your neighbor. So you uh, just don't know, like most of Israelis don't know anything about Jordan. So Jordan is just around the corner and we see them almost every day when people are driving on our Eastern border. You know, you see Jordan and most of Israelis never been there. And also don't want to be there. They think it's a dangerous country, it's an enemy, though we have peace. And our challenge is to tell them, okay, there are people on the other side, let's meet each other and speak about our common interest. And this is what we do in Jordan as well. And I was surprised to find out that in Jordan, they have the same fear for Israel as Israel has for Jordan. You know, they think going to Israel is dangerous. Going to Israel, if they go to Israel, they will get shot by a soldier. This is what they're going in their mind. And uh, our job is just to come everybody's down and bring people together. And we have a great hub in Jordan. We call it Jordan Echo Park, where it's like a, a field school in the Jordan Valley when we bring these people together. And we do a lot of educational events. If it's a... Uh, conferences, uh, youth trips, uh, we take young professionals uh, together and we discuss these issues. On the other hand, we know that we cannot change the reality with youth. So we work with the different government. We just target the different ministers. We try to speak the language of the current government. If, even if the government like 
this government or uh, the one was uh, like before the previous government, the right wing government, we try to speak their language in order not to get uh, uh, the fact that they don't want to speak with us. Okay, it means that uh, we want to approach uh, uh, the right minister, the right Knesset member in Israel that they will will they will be willing to meet our neighbors, the Palestinians and Jordanian, to promote uh, the policy that we want to make, especially on uh, the Jordan River and the Dead Sea. Okay, we want to promote governmental cooperation between the countries. And we had results. We had the water energy nexus agreement that was signed between Israel and Jordan about uh, two years ago. Uh, this is something that uh, Ecopis initiated. And we had um, uh, the Jordan River Rehabilitation Program that in the last COP in Egypt, COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, Israel and Jordan signed a memorandum of understanding for the uh, rehabilitation of the Jordan, all initiated by Ecopis work about with uh, in the governmental uh, of different governmental offices. So the combination of bottom up and top down is very 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 important. Yeah, I find that so so interesting as a different way also to think about the dynamics of of peace building and and bringing together um, uh, different different groups. Uh, Mira, as, as somebody who's an expert in in sort of a political scientist who looks at international relations, I'm wondering if you can put this in in sort of a broader context for us of of kind of how this this works in terms of both environmental policy bringing bringing groups together, but also kind of youth and education um, and and tackling sort of regional uh, you know uh, regional crises that don't necessarily it, you know there's this interesting moment in the film where they talk about where the border is right and and we can see this in such an arbitrary way but uh the dead sea is shrinking both on the jordanian side and on the israeli side right and so there's a way in which the crisis transcends the the boundaries that have been created so from the perspective of a political scientist tell us sort of in the context of how this um you know uh, solving environmental problems water problems how this can uh, can help and give us reason maybe for optimism in terms of um, finding solutions. The scene you're mentioning is just mind blowing, partly as an example of um, maybe questionable parenting. Um, intellectually, he he exhibited a lot of love for his son, but his he says to his son, if I think they're standing at the bank of the Jordan River at that moment, right? He says, if yeah. the Jordan River dries up, there will be no border. No, he start, starts by explaining, Odette starts by explaining to his son that the 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 uh, border between Israel and Jordan runs down the middle of the river, which itself is not very grand either. I mean, it's it's the Middle East after all, right? Um, environmentally, ecologically, and he and then he adds to his son, if the river dries up, the border will cease to exist, which of course isn't true because borders exist on maps, not on land, though they can certainly and often are fortified on land. And we know about your last president. I'm up, I'm uh, normally in Canada, so I could say your last president, Avi. We know about <laughs> fortifying borders. Um, so he says, if the if the river dries up, the border will will disappear, which again isn't true. But he's fine. He's being a bit playful. But then his son, who can't be more than twelve or thirteen says to him, to his dad, if the border disappears, will there be peace between Israel, between us and Jordan, between Israel and Jordan? But then he has a second take. I mean, he was born long after the peace, formal peace treaty was signed between Israel and Jordan. So he kind of knows that it might not be true that they're at war. So then he says, or is there already peace between us? So the point is, is that this generation of youth has grown up in in the um, in the light of formal peace between Israel and Egypt and Israel and Jordan, but they don't feel the peace. And 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 Nadav explained it that Israelis don't want to go to Jordan. They don't feel warm towards Jordan. Jordanians don't want to come to Israel. They don't feel warm towards Israel. So um, so definitely more uh, factual education needs to be done with youth, but also uh, again emotional education, peace building. But there is a catch: peace building between particularly Israelis and Palestinians, and in, in a sense, Jordanians are a little bit of, you could say, defenders for their Palestinian brethren, peace can't come without justice. And so we can't just say, let's all get along, 
because there are issues that need resolving um, at the human level, at the level of property, at the level of freedom, at the level of, of anti-occupation work, at the level of the Nakba refugees. And so this moment, that boy, like I want to, I want to meet him in a few years and I want to talk to him and I want to talk to um, others like him, boys and girls um, and non-binary kids across in, in all those areas. And I want to I want to get them together, not necessarily in a spirit of simply normalizing and saying, let's all get along, but a spirit of co-resistance, resisting um, the recession of the Dead Sea and resisting oppression wherever it exists. Yeah, I, I think um this it, it's so interesting that that scene in terms of the the parenting uh lesson that's there but it but it does also you know it, to Nadab's point about educating children and the youth right um they're growing up in and I think this is one of the things that's so striking for those of us who remember perhaps what the resorts looked like on the Dead Sea and sort of know that that uh road number 90 it's quite it's quite shocking to see sort of the the sinkholes that have opened up and the way in which the, the sea has shrunk. Um, but for the children, this is the reality of the world that they're growing up in, right? So they might hear stories about what things once looked like. Um, but it also, you know, it, it points to, we can see in the film, the, the personal relationships that develop um, between, you know, it does revolve around these three primary characters of, of, Oded and Yusuf and Munket, um, the the three of them, and it is it is uh, quite striking to see that the way in which these personal relationships um, develop, but also it reveals the complexities um, for for both of them. You know, it's very fraught. Uh, it's not so simple. We see Yusuf who has to cross the checkpoint in order to be able to um, visit the Dead Sea, but is 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 able to sort of put this aside in terms of the larger goal, but it's, you know, the filmmakers do a good job of showing us how complex it is. And the same thing for Munket, who's, you know, his wife is Palestinian. He has a family that's originally from Nablus. Like there's a very personal component. This is not so simple. Um, so Nadav, I, I'm wondering if you can shed some light first and Mary, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, on, on the personal relationships that we see in the film, but also through your work and in, in eco piece, how you sort of bridge these divides, but also the types of conversations that we might see, um, and that we do see at some points in the film that are very, very fraught and very complicated. Um, how do how does this reveal kind of the complexities of this type of work? Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. It's very complex. Uh, it's very complex in the film and in reality, it's even more complicated. Uh, a lot of emotions are involved, uh, especially during, a, you know, a very tense security situation. If it's in Palestine or it's in Israel, um, and uh, we see it with our teammates. We have colleagues in Ramallah, we have colleagues in Amman, and uh, it's not always easy to cooperate, even though we are all have the same, the same goals. Everybody who works in Ecopis, they understand they're working with Israelis, and we are uh, working together in order to achieve good for all the people of the region. And during tense time, uh, we have issues, and we have to talk about it, and we're talking about it. We have meetings. Uh, people are express, expressing their feelings, they're expressing uh, uh, how difficult it is for them, uh, if it's a freedom of movement, if it's uh, other issues of they cannot go to work, for example, in days that uh, they have a lot of, like, uh, we have uh, staff people who live in Nablus, and in, like, in the last two weeks, there is a lot of problems in Nablus regarding military, Israeli military, uh, a, a war over there and um, we and I proud I'm proud to say that we can we all overcome it we all understand the complicity of the of the region and even though we have uh, terror attacks or with the Palestinian it's Israeli army attacks uh, we understand here we we stay here you know nobody goes anywhere and we have to uh, when we have to work together in order to achieve a, to achieve a, you know better life for everybody 
And um, what I like about our work in Ecopis and about the movie is that though we, uh, we don't have the same political opinion, okay, all of us. Uh, I'm environmentalist. Uh, when uh, people start to, uh, to talk politics here, I usually uh, go aside or it's not that I'm not interested, I just, there's so much, you know, uh, emotions and intensity in these topics while, while in the environmental issues or nature conservation is something that I grew up with. You know, it's something, it's a part of me and uh, building peace with, on, with, with my neighbors while well, using nature conservation, environmental uh, cooperation as a tool, you know, to get to know them. I really enjoyed going to Jordan before I, before I uh, joined Ecopeace, Jordan was my favorite destination of traveling because uh, like amazing nature. And when I uh, got to uh, start working for Ecopeace, I said, wow, this is my dream job. You know, working with Jordanians, this is like my, my favorite country, you know, going and visit them and get to know more Jordanians. And slowly, slowly, you know, I, 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 I also met people that are not so, uh, you know, it's not so simple for them to work for uh, with Israelis. And and uh, I got to understand the complexity. And uh, I think uh, the film also show that, also showing this, like, uh, the fact that the Dead Sea is a shared water source between the three people, Israelis, Palestinians, and Jordanians, make it even uh, more important to, to make a regional effort, but also get the international community. You know, uh, we want to promote the Dead Sea to be a World Heritage Site, to uh, have more world attention on this and not allowing uh, the you know the industry and the, uh, you know the different countries to neglect it okay so we want to bring everybody together and try and save uh, by the way uh, Ecopis is a part partnering now with Oded from the film we have a, we joined a coalition is an Israeli coalition of environmental organization uh, with uh, the SPNI and uh, and other Israeli environmental organization, that we work together in the Knesset to try to change the concession of the Dead Sea Walks for 2030, and we we hope that this will lead to more you know governmental control or on on the environmental damage that they're doing throughout the years. Yeah, that's it's so interesting because it does come through in the in the film the sort of economic aspects of the exploitation of the land um, that that takes place and and that being a major obstacle and a barrier, right? So we're all familiar with the you know the Dead Sea works and the minerals and the um, the various uh, creams and products that uh, might might have the label of the Dead Sea, but we might not think about the ways in which that can damage the environmental damage that can take place also in terms of the mineral extraction that, that takes place. But um, Mira, I, I'm, I am curious uh, to hear to hear your thoughts before we go on to that about the personal nature of the of the interactions that we see um, in in the film between these between these different characters and um, how this reveals sort of the complexity of of building peace and building trust, but also engaging in dialogue. Um, mm -hmm. with with those who might seem to be behind a barrier, behind a wall. Mm -hmm. It is touching to see their friendship and their camaraderie and the solidarity in, in this mission, which again is going to be extremely physically demanding and taxing and risky. Um, and uh, I mean, it can be literally painful to step into the Dead Sea, like it, it, can, it can hurt. And so they're, they're doing something quite elaborate um, in taking that risk and particularly looking at Oded and Yusuf's friendship and Oded says, you're awesome, man. And, you know, I was, I was always, always intrigued to see how uh, uh, colloquialisms are translated in subtitles. So I'm always looking closely at things like that. One other thing I think about when I think about their relationship is that their interaction is solely in Hebrew. And remember, I mean, I, I love Hebrew and we're in a center for Jewish studies and I speak only Hebrew to my kids and I have a tattoo of my kids' Hebrew names on my arm. But when I go into Ramallah or Bethlehem, I cover the Hebrew because I know it doesn't 
um, read the same way to a Palestinian. I mean, it's sort of like what Nadav was saying, if a Jordanian were to come to Israel and they feel under threat by his, an Israeli soldier, a, a Palestinian in Ramallah or Nablus or Janine doesn't know what my intentions are, doesn't understand what Hebrew means to me. And for them, it symbolizes the language of the oppressor. So one thing that did strike me is that they were speaking in Hebrew, which of course is probably their best joint language, but they do have the option probably to speak in English. So it's something I wonder about. It's something I wonder Oded's wife meets all of them is introducing herself in Hebrew. I do wonder how much Israel, maybe this is something Odette can answer. I wonder how much Israelis are thinking about the optics of which language you choose when you engage with others. It's, and that because there isn't sort of an extra power dynamic when you're when you're using the, the dominant language of the dominant power. That's one thing I think about. Yeah, Nadav, can you, on a very sort of, uh, uh, sort of practical level, when EcoPeace does its does its work, is it is it is it usually conducted in English? And and also, in terms of the organization, how is governance shared between Israelis, Palestinians, and Jordanians of of the organization? How 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 is it actually managed? How the how the governments shared? How, well, how how is the organization EcoPeace actually administered um, as a shared? Uh, you know, in, in terms of the the power dynamics that that we see here uh, between uh, our three between, offices between your three offices uh, and also what are is work conducted in english usually to um sort of find a common mm -hmm. shared language okay so it really depends what kind of a uh, project or event we're doing but uh, when we have participants that doesn't speak english so we use translators uh, in our conferences we usually do simultaneous translations so can everybody understand but most of our activities are conducted in in English, unfortunately. I I learned Arabic for five years, and I think all Israelis uh, should know Arabic. And actually, my personal opinion is that if all Israelis would have speaking Arabic, then we would have reached peace a long time ago. Okay, Arabic is a bridge to to peace. Is is a bridge the language. Is a bridge to understanding people, to reach out to people, and I think it's, uh, from my point of view, Zionism in the uh, biggest failure is the fact that Arabic was not taken seriously in the education system. So unfortunately, we have to work in English because most of Israelis uh, don't speak Arabic, and, uh, and this is my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, um, and the fact that how we uh, govern our, our work together is most of all offices, like the Israeli office, is working mainly nationally in Israel. And the Palestinians, this is our biggest strength that we have common goals, but the Palestinian speaks to a Palestinian. The Jordanian speaks to the Jordanian, and Israeli speaks to the Jordanian. So and no, nobody will blame anyone that is working for, you know, a foreign governments or other uh, something like this. Like, it's very important for us that uh, each side understands the self-interest. We're doing a project that is Israeli interest, Palestinian interest, and Jordanian interest alike. And we find and this is what we want to uh, the people of the region to understand. And for that, we need the Palestinians to speak to the Palestinians, to, to speak that like working with Israelis, it's not normalization all the time. Working with Israelis in order to get our life better, it's to get our sewage networks connected, to get the river clean, to get our you know uh, common problems, the environmental problems solved. Okay, we cannot do it by ourselves. We have to have the Israelis, even though they are the occupying f so, uh, force or the oppressor, whatever they think about Israel. We need our partners in Tel Aviv to help us getting our life better. And this is what we try to expand the Palestinian society. Okay, working with us is good for them. And we not, I'm not doing it in order to only uh, help the Palestinians. I'm here also as an Israeli Zionist. I'm here as Israeli Zionist. I think that this is Israel's interest to help the Palestinians. 
we will gain more uh, security from this uh, project. We will get more environmental uh, protection. You know that we Israel suffers a lot from pollution that come from the West Bank. If it's in uh, in uh, the Alexander Stream, the Hebron Stream, many streams that suffers from pollution, and for many years the government, the Israeli government, failed to solve these issues. And we say to the Israeli government, but also with the Palestinian uh, Authority, we say we have to work together in order to solve these issues. Like we say that Israel failed to solve it for many many years, and there was a report by the state uh, controller and uh, the mentioned that the government failed for all these years to uh, to solve the environmental problems so it's only through cooperation right and and as you show right they, these are these are problems that uh cross the boundaries that um you know it, it is from where we started it would be a win-win situation if both sides worked on these problems together because these environmental issues, these issues of pollution affect uh, both societies, right? And so it's a natural a point of collaboration to work together to improve the lives, the daily lives of the people who are living there. Um, yeah, that's that's precisely hopefully what what can be accomplished. I, I realize that we're almost out of time for a discussion, but I, I do uh, want to give each of you an opportunity to share any sort of concluding thoughts, remarks, observations on on the film um, that you'd like to be sure to leave our to leave our audience with after having seen uh, Dead Sea Dead Sea Guardian. So, uh, Mira, any any last thoughts about the film that you'd like to share before we wrap up? I think I'd probably just like to remind ourselves that while. Well, no NGO, no organization, no film can do everything. And so we need, I mean, Nadav's a hydrologist. We need Nadav at an organization like EcoPeace. Nevertheless, or at the same time, I'd like to just keep in mind that there are multiple problems that need to be solved simultaneously. We can't wait for the Dead Sea to recede any further to take action. And we also can't wait for more uh, people to be killed and more pogroms to happen in Palestinian towns and the occupation to, to drag on. And I just want to, I just, one thing we did get a chance to do is to define normalization, anti-normalization. No, anti-normalization doesn't mean necessarily that you don't see the other's humanity. Well, sometimes it does in practice and I'm, I'm against not seeing the other's humanity. We always have to see the person in front of us. But what it means is that we don't say that everything's normal because it's not, it's not a normal situation, meaning by normalcy, I mean freedom and dignity. So we always have to keep that in mind. How do we get people not only to see each other and sit across the table from each other, but to take away the structural barriers so that there's freedom and dignity and so that people can do better work together to solve these urgent ecological problems. Absolutely. Thank you. Nadav, yeah, concluding thoughts. Yeah, I think, I think the movie is a great uh, tool to bring the people of the, of the region to show them that we need to act together in order to solve this issue. Uh, regarding the Dead Sea, uh, you know, the Palestinians have less uh, uh, responsibility of this condition because they were, not, they were not the ones who diverted the water. And we know who is responsible. It's mainly Israel and Jordan, also Syria. But the Israelis and the Jordanians need to start thinking about how can we solve this issue and it's it's not simple it's hard uh, we know that jordan is a country that suffer from uh, water uh, sac scarcity sac uh, scarcity scarcity water scarcity and uh, you know the dead sea is not in uh, their top priority right now okay they want more water more fresh water for domestic consumption. Uh, so we face all this, we're facing, you know, we're an area of the climate crisis. You know, this is, uh, how can we introduce more water to the Dead Sea while we face a climate crisis and drought, you know, and all these very hard environmental conditions. And uh, this is something that we need to think out of the box, you know, get our best technology. Uh, you know, uh, something we, we need to put a lot of effort into it 
but it's really, really important because what we're going to uh, uh, live for the next generations, do we want to see our kids or grandkids going to the Dead Sea and they will see no sea, or it will be so small, it will be a disastrous area and it will be, it will be very hard to access the region. So I think that the movie is a great tool, you know, uh, uh, for expanding this awareness that is really missing today uh, throughout the world. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I really want to thank both of you for for joining us for this conversation, for this program. And as you as you suggested, Nadav, that the film itself is is an excellent tool for expanding uh, awareness of of the problems, but also the opportunities. I do. I want to share here with the audience that uh, for those who are interested in supporting uh, the work, there is this site, dsgproject.com, that is the site that's created by Dead Sea uh, Guardians, the film project. And I also want to mention that um, that in order you can support the efforts of, of Dead Sea Guardians in the film here, and also that uh, we can see EcoPeace um, Eco ME, you can visit uh, the site of, of Eco Peace Middle East, um, if you'd like to support the work that we see uh, featured in the film as well. So I want to thank both of you for joining this conversation, joining this discussion. Thank you, uh, Mira, for sharing your knowledge and expertise. Thank you, Nadav, uh, for telling us more about the important work that, that you're doing. On behalf of the Yukon Center for Judaic Studies and Yukon Global Affairs and our Abrahamic Initiative, we're proud to uh, support the film festival and support this this important film, Dead Sea Guardian. So, thank you very much. And save us a little popcorn. <laughs> we will. Thank you very much. Thanks, Avi and Nadav.